can we just be friends with people that we actually like and who like us? Because that is what will solve female friendships, like being perceived as difficult or hard. Like, oh, female friendships are so hard. Girls are so hard. Like, no. It's hard because you're friends with people who you don't even like or don't even like you. Hey, bestie. Welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group podcast where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm your host, Elle, and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about the female friendship crisis, which is brought about by the rising therapization of relationships, the loss of third spaces, and the rising costs of living. So if you're having a hard time making female friends right now, it's not all on you, okay? There are all these factors that contribute to why it is so hard to make and keep girlfriends nowadays. But we're gonna talk about the solutions as well, so stay tuned. Now we have lots to cover, but before we get into it, I need you to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you never miss a spoiled girly episode. With that being said, let's get into it. Kind of like the idea of romantic relationships, this idea of having female friends, like female friendships, like a girl group, it has been sold to us from a very early age. And I am selling it to you too in this class, okay? This class is sponsored by female friendships okay i love female friendships like i recommend it all day every day to anyone who asks me okay if there is one gift that you can give to yourself let it be female friendships like the kind of support and encouragement and just like good vibes that you get from good female friends is so unmatched okay like the movies weren't lying to us when they show all these friends like having fun with each other and like braiding each other's hair and it's like sisters that you don't share parents with you know and sometimes like those bonds can be stronger than like your own biological sisters you know for a lot of people and i honestly think that having female friends having a girl group having sisterhood is an act of resistance in a world where women are pitted against each other just so we could tear each other down and do the work of the system for them no thank you okay and i like this quote from schmex in the city it goes maybe our girlfriends are our soulmates and guys are just people to have fun with Okay, that's a statement. So to help me sell you the idea of female friendships, let's look at the data. Research from UCLA suggests that women who have support from female friends during times of stress may live longer than those who don't. So let's get into two reasons why they're amazing. Number one is the emotional support and empathy that your girlfriends give you. A 2021 American Perspective survey found that there are massive differences in the degree to which men and women rely on friends for emotional support and are willing to share their personal feelings. And this notion that women rely on their friends emotionally is supported in this study and it states that when facing stress women tend to adopt tend and befriend mechanism unlike the confrontational or isolating nature found in the typical fight or flight response tend and befriend sees women leaning into their relationships to navigate stress and challenges so instead of withdrawing or engaging in the conflict itself we turn to our support systems which not only alleviates the immediate stress of it but it also strengthens our emotional bonds with each other and it makes our overall relationship stronger more resilient and more enduring and these psychological benefits they're not just exclusive to the interactions where one person is sharing what they're going through according to dr gloria gilbert founder and ceo of the institute for holistic rejuvenation when women spend quality time together they produce more serotonin which is a neurotransmitter that helps fight depression and contribute to a general feeling of well-being and this idea is supported by the american psychological association whose research reveals that women who maintain strong friendships are less likely to experience depression, anxiety, and stress. And Jane Fonda puts it so beautifully. She says, Because you guys, you kind of sit side by side and watch sports or cars or women. Women sit facing each other eye to eye and they say, I'm in trouble, I need you, can you help me? And the second reason why you should get on the female friendship bandwagon is personal growth and empowerment. Female friendships help foster personal growth by being a source of empowerment. There have been times in my life where I'm just not thriving or vibing. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. I, I'm i human, okay? If I'm thinking of doing something, I don't feel like I could achieve it. I'm able to do it. I'm even qualified to do it. I talk to my girlfriends. I leave the conversation. I'm walking on a cloud, okay? All of a sudden, I feel like I can do anything. Like, they hype me up. And there's just something about it, you know? To feel like you're seen and other people, like, seeing your achievements and, like, your potential and just, like, really tapping into that. Like, they're really hyping you up, okay? And it's not like they're just kissing your bum for no reason. You know, they're always real with you as well. Like when you're not on the path that you want to be on, like, I don't know, just chef's kiss like all my girlfriends and if you have such a relationship with your girlfriends like it's just the most amazing thing ever like I, I don't know why like like they are such a huge part 
of our lives and i feel like we just don't give that enough credit like i get that right now the theme is i don't owe anyone anything like i'm an alpha female i'm a sigma female like what are these terms that people use now basically to like elevate themselves and say that like oh i'm too good for friends i don't need friends like it's because no one is good enough for me like everyone's jealous of me and i would say that i was at a point in my life where i thought that but i still had like super close friendships that i've had since childhood so i was never really like friendless but geographically you know when you're in a new geographical area or your childhood friends they're busy with life you kind of feel isolated and I did feel that way that like oh I'm too good for friendships like I'm gonna be alone like no one can be on my level oh my god <laughs> I was on that see this is from experience but I was miserable okay like I felt like I had to take on everything I didn't have anyone to verify things with like is this a good idea is this outfit giving is the makeup giving like I didn't have anyone to talk about that with you know so I'm gonna tell you a story. I had a little watch party of my videos with my girlfriends because I wanted to do like a focus group about how I'm gonna improve my videos. I've been getting these comments about you look so different right now. Like what changed with this blah blah. Girl, my girlfriends, we sat around the TV. They literally critiqued everything so the videos now look a little different because we did that focus group okay like see i love my girlfriends like honestly girlfriends make you prettier they make you more successful they make you richer they make you happier like get a girlfriend okay today's video is sponsored by female friendships but as great as female friendships are there seems to be a quote-unquote female friendship crisis a lot of women are struggling making girlfriends and i've published so many videos about it so watch those classes if you need help making female friendships. So let's get into exactly why the crisis is happening and how we can solve it. So let's get into the first reason, which is the devaluation of community. I feel like nowadays when people say community, it's by default called the online community. But let's be real, like the online community, it's online, it's virtual. Like they're not gonna be like around you, helping you with things like physically. You still need like your physical community in your geographical location okay you need to have your village and one thing that has caused this devaluation of community the devaluation of the village is the way that capitalism works is the way that for a lot of people they sell their time for money for resources for survival so time that you do not use for work or your business or this and that is time that you don't make money and we're gonna get into this the rising costs of living is making it so that people are just more hesitant to help others because that takes away time from income accumulation you know like if you spend an afternoon helping someone move it's because that's money out of your pocket okay and so nowadays people are less likely to help other people and and people with resources they are more likely to outsource certain services to other people you know instead of having your friends over to help you move and eat pizza and have beer and this and that create a whole experience out of it you just hire movers and you're done with it and i get that because i'm one of those people i would just rather hire people to do things than ask like friends and family for that because i don't know i'm shy i don't know like i don't I like asking so this vibe that people are scared of inconveniencing other people it's really reflected in this video we're gonna watch about the disappearance of the small favors economy there's this thing called the small favors economy and the idea is essentially that in the past people used to rely on their community their network their neighbors for small favors things like rides to the airport things like a cup of sugar things like borrowing a dress for an event but now with late stage capitalism those things all seem like rude for us to ask because we could just do them ourselves like we could just call an uber instead of inconveniencing a friend or we could order a dress on amazon and have it get there tomorrow or we could like post made our groceries instead of like asking around if anyone has anything and that's actually really bad because it drives us further into isolation from each other and from our friends which is good for literally no one except for the people who are trying to sell us stuff on our phones honestly i think we all need to get a little bit more comfortable with the idea of inconvenience it's really not that bad and actually can in this case be really good like if you ask your friend for a favor they'll ask you for a favor and it's a great cycle and a great way to deepen that friendship and stop our loneliness epidemic to be clear if you're gonna be if you're gonna ask for small favors you gotta give and offer for small favors and the disappearance of the small favors economy it's resulting in friendships that promote showing up for your friends only when it's convenient for you and i totally get that like i'm all about what's good for me and there's definitely nuance and discernment with this and also boundaries but your friends are your friends like they're your extended family basically sometimes you have to make time for them you have to make space for them you have to make effort for them like that's what it's about 
because that's what community is about. And this video we're gonna watch, it words perfectly the importance of letting your friends know that you're there for them for the little things too. There are a critical mass of people out there who describe themselves in the following way. I may not check in very regularly, but when there's a crisis, I'll be there for my friends. That is not friendship. It's not. Firstly, when there's a crisis, I'm going to help people who I don't consider my friend. I'll help acquaintances who are having a hard time. That's You come together in a crisis. You help strangers in a crisis. That's not a basis of friendship. That is a given. Secondly, what makes you think that the people you are purporting to be friends with are going to feel comfortable reaching out to you when they are in a crisis if you don't talk to them? People who think this way do not prioritize the people in their life and they do not care about growing their relationships and being healthy in that way. And that is not friendship. There's no reciprocity. And obviously everything with nuance, okay? Like it's not about living for other people, living for their validation, giving up everything to be with your friends, to do things for your friends. Like it's not about that. It's all about being in community with each other, okay? A servant mindset. I feel like that's just been popping up in our classes recently and it's probably for a reason. Like we all need to be in our servant mindset a little bit more. Like a lot of people, they confuse friendships as complicated. Like oh, it's so hard. Like it's so much work. Like it's a supposed to be hard to make it worth it. I'm like, no, friendships are not hard. Like they're not, like they are so easy. If you actually like the people you're friends with, okay? Like, I don't know, like it's not hard. It's like when people say marriage is hard, like, oh, marriage is hard. For who? Like marriage is not hard. It's work, but it's not hard, okay? Especially if you like the person you're married to, okay? Like I feel like a lot of this is like, just can we stop being friends with people we don't like, okay? And I saw this one TikTok about how this girl she's posting about i'm so done seeing katie fang's vlogs nothing against her but it just inspires so much jealousy out of me i had to block her and i'm like a lot of us are in friendships with people we are jealous of a lot of us are in friendships with people that we look down on because they're not making good choices a lot of us are in friendships with people that we're just like we don't like them and yet we're friends with them just because we don't want to break up like no i honestly think that if you no longer look up to the person that you're friends with, you should let them go and find people who look up to them. Okay, hot take, I know but you should only be friends with people that you look up to. Like every person in your life that you are in constant contact with, you need to be looking up to them because how can you be with people that you admire? And then that kind of puts you in like a judgment vibe every time you see them. Like, I know we're human. Okay, we're human. It puts you in that vibe, you know? And like, they don't deserve that from you. Like they don't deserve to be frenemies with someone. Like they don't even know that they're frenemies with you. You know, like it's so unfair to them. So I think that's the vibe. That's why friendships are no longer hard for me because I stopped being quote-unquote friends with people that I no longer look up to okay friendships are not hard they're very very easy actually and not only are they easy but they make everything else substantially easier and I love how Rosie Spinks says this in her 2023 Substack blog titled the friendship problem friendships are by their very nature made of friction to know what is going on in someone's day-to-day -day life to make plans with them and then reschedule those plans when someone inevitably gets sick and then bring over Cal Paul or soup or an extra laptop charger to water their plants while they're away to ask them to take your kids when you're feeling sad or for help getting rid of mice in your house to show up for the walk you plan and even when you're a vulnerable, anxious mess, this is all friction. And friction is not just interrupting your day or life to help out a friend, but also admitting you need that kind of help you cannot pay for or order yourself. To pierce through your veil of seamless productivity and having it together to say, I need something from you. Can you help me? That was so beautiful. Like, I can't. Moving on, the second reason why it's so hard nowadays to make female friendships is the lack of third spaces. Coined by sociologist Ray Oldenburg, third places are social spaces separate from home and work that serve as gathering places for people to relax and connect with each other. Basically, your home is your first space and your school or work is your second space and the third space is basically the places that are not that, okay? And public third spaces are free third spaces where you can hang out with your friends and just vibe, but increasingly public third spaces are increasingly no longer existing or becoming more expensive or becoming unsafe, okay? So to to access safe and cozy and vibey third spaces, we have to pay. And so they become no longer public, quote unquote. And so that provides a barrier for a lot of people to hang out with friends and just cultivate their social lives. And also as technology gets more advanced and we are more reliant on it, we have traded the physical third spaces for our computers, like the computer, the phone, the iPad, the 
whatever, has become our new third space. Our third space is now online communities. And while I love online communities, we're in one right now, I still want to emphasize the importance of in real life physical communities that are close to you who can lend you a hand when you need help, like physically be right there. In an article titled The Death of Third Places and the Evolution of Communities, the writer sums up these sentiments in a simple question. If we can get all of these comfort from our couches, why do we need to get out to meet strangers? But from my vibe check online, it's evident that a lot of people are lonely. A lot of people don't have friends. Like it is clear that social media, these online communities, they're not a viable substitute to the actual third places, to the actual communities that we cultivate in these third places. Alice writes, remember when hanging out with friends meant being in the same physical space instead of a Zoom call? When grabbing coffee didn't mean imagining the smell of freshly brewed beans as you sip from your instant Nescafe. What about those cinema nights we used to share, not movie marathons on Netflix, but spontaneous trips to our local theater to experience something new and exciting together. It's time for us to end digital only socializing and rekindle the real life connections fundamental to our well-being. Let's reintroduce third places into our lives, places where we can come together, hang out, and create unforgettable memories without worrying about battery levels or bad phone receptions. In addition to the disappearance of the small favors economy, the loss of third spaces, another factor contributing to the decline of female friendships is the therapization of interpersonal relationships. Because more and more people are turning to their therapists for their personal struggles, these are things that we used to tell our friends and now we tell a professional which like I said I'm a huge advocate for therapy love 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 therapy but it is not a substitute for female friendships okay let me say that again I love therapy but it is not a substitute for female friendships and one thing that happens as well when a lot of people go into therapy like you know you learn all these words I don't owe anyone anything put yourself first this and that we tend to apply that to our interpersonal relationships so that we can avoid having to be vulnerable so that we can avoid having to take accountability so that we can avoid having to work on ourselves, okay? So like I said, everything in moderation, like if what you are doing is not giving you the results that you want in life, then something needs to change. Like that's literally what it is. And this trend of therapizing our interpersonal relationships, it manifests in therapy speak. And there has been a rise of therapy speak. In 2021, Katie Waldman wrote for The New Yorker, the rise of therapy speak, how a language got off the couch and into the world. And therapy speak refers to the communication trend of people using phrases and terms that are commonly attributed to therapy in the language that they use in their everyday relationships. Let's look at some examples of therapy speak. When we would make plans with this friend, they would change them the day before. Trying to reschedule and rearrange events would be met with, the plan has changed. We're going to do an alternative activity. I'm setting a boundary. One of the key things to note is that it's totally fine and normal even to ask our friends to change plans. Where we're getting into trouble here is in this example, the individual didn't ask for anyone else's input. They didn't check on anyone else's needs. And it was really phrased as, I've made this decision and that's final. Essentially, therapy speak is using the word boundaries or self-care to disguise selfishness or cruelty. Interestingly, a comment under this TikTok even singles out the use of emotional labor to describe listening to your loved ones talk about their feelings. The same thing happened a while back with using emotional labor to describe listening to your friends or partner talk about feelings. And someone said, OMG, yes, I had a friend who over brunch said she was doing emotional labor just this once by hearing about my week, lol. That is wild. That's so wild. And I can't stress this enough, but like healthy relationships should provide space for vulnerable conversations. Like what are your friends for? if you're not able to be vulnerable with them, okay? And obviously with nuance, like you're not gonna be vulnerable with everyone, but like your very, very close core friends, like if you're not able to be vulnerable with them and share like your apprehensions, what you're nervous about, your dreams, your hopes, like are you really friends though? And it brings me back to what I said earlier, like can we just be friends with people that we actually like and who like us? Because that is what will solve female friendships, like being perceived as difficult or hard. Like oh, female friendships are so hard girls are so hard like no it's hard because you're friends with people who you don't even like or don't even like you in an article titled is therapy speak ruining our relationships meg walters enumerates other therapy phrases that have found their way into our personal relationships in the wake of a much needed increase in accessibility to therapy and therapists in the digital age a whole new communication system is beginning to form we are encouraged to set boundaries and hold space and reject toxicity we are taught to look out for things such as gaslighting narcissism and love bombing in our relationships 
She then goes on to talk about the dangers of not only misusing, but also abusing these phrases. Without a trained guide, many have begun to develop the habit of applying their half-baked understanding of psychology to situations where the concepts simply don't apply. If we feel uncomfortable or unhappy or anxious, we reach for a term that fits. Soon, we are speaking in a language filled with therapy speak, even if we aren't necessarily qualified to understand it. In turn, important concepts begin to lose their meaning and our conversations and relationships are diluted with increasingly vague, meaningless turns of phrase. Now, Walt Walter drives the point even further by claiming that therapy speak has a more sinister effect than just seeing popular therapy language removed from their context. She writes, At its worst, therapy speak allows us to arm ourselves with language that masquerades as a kinder, more empathetic form of communication, while in reality, it is weaponized to excuse our most selfish choices. And unfortunately, there are people whose experience supports this. Charlotte, a writer in London who was featured in the article for having experienced therapy speak firsthand, shared that the communication trend has made it hard to call out somebody for being a bad friend or being self-absorbed because it's allowed them to mask their intentions with a bunch of pseudo-scientific lingo they learned on TikTok. And another woman named Louise, she emphasized that therapy speak comes across as very clinical. She shares, you can't just use these terms and phrases as a blanket template to end all your friendships. Every person is different, so your conversations with them should all be different too, depending on what they would actually want to hear from you. And if we take into account that women make up a larger portion of therapy patients, it's likely that therapy speak is more prevalent in women's relationships. Like I said, I am all for therapy. I am a huge advocate for therapy, but there's nuance. You can't therapize your interpersonal relationships like that if you are to have these strong relationships with people. Yes, you can set boundaries. Yes, you can reject toxicity, literally disavow it. Do not claim the toxicity, okay? But you also have to use the phrases and the concepts that you learn in therapy with nuance. Okay, it's giving no nuance. Because like I said in the article, a lot of people who therapize their relationships, they just use it as an excuse not to grow as people, not to be better friends. And uh, you know what? If people don't want to put in the effort to being a good friend, like it's okay. Just like don't make friends, okay? So once you decide that you are ready to be friends with people, then put your whole back into it, okay? Like really put your whole back into it because that is how you will make your friendships so much easier is when you are in your servant mindset and you find people who are in that similar mindset as you. Like, I don't know, like female friendships are not that hard, I swear. So the last reason that we're gonna talk about as to why we have a female friendship crisis nowadays is the rising costs of living. Like the financial barriers to friendship is so much greater now. And I'm not just talking about the loss of third spaces. Now you have to buy a coffee, you have to pay for parking, you have to do this and that just to hang out with your friends. And one could say, well, why don't you just hang out at home? The thing is people are getting priced out of their homes. People due to a lot of things, the rising cost of living, people are moving to places where there's lower cost of living, thus taking them away from their community, taking them away from their friends. Like you can't even see your friends anymore because you live so far away, okay? Like friendship is just becoming so much more expensive now. And that's the thing too, is especially when you're younger, like when you're not making a lot of money, like if you're grown, like you can afford a coffee with your friends or you can have your friends come over, you know? Like, but when you're younger, you need these low cost, free public third places to hang out with your friends. Or you need a home to actually invite them to or your friend has to have a home that you can go to like when you're younger there's like these barriers that you just simply cannot overcome and that's why we are seeing like a lot of young people having problems with friendships is because the environment is not conducive to fostering friendships okay and i'm just seeing it now that like having friends from a young age that you keep as you get older is a privilege because being able to stay in contact with your friends all the way from way back when that is a privilege and so this vibe of having to spend money just hang out with your friends it was captured in Mia Brabham Nolan's article titled how much are your friendships costing you and the writer recalls how moving to LA and having her social calendar filled with all these engagements it made her feel as if spending money was the only way to have a good time she writes in today's world experiences take center stage from lavish weekend trips and themed pop-up museums to cute in theory but subpar in reality brunches featuring $20 mimosas that are mostly orange juice by the way it's become too normal to drop Jackson's and Benjamin's on a single outing with buddies. After a few weekday happy hours, you've spent the same amount as your monthly utilities before payday. And yeah, I feel like that's the vibe with a lot of friendships nowadays too. Like when you're older, you're grown, you can afford it, okay, whatever. But that's why we're seeing a friendship crisis, especially in people who are younger, you know? Like a lot of the times, a lot of people just can't afford to have friends. So now that we've talked about all the reasons why we're in a female friendship crisis right now, let's talk about the solutions. Number one is make your friendships convenient. One of the things that has worked so 
so well for me is making my routines more accommodating to people. And what I mean by that is, for example, when you get a gym membership, you can choose one that allows you to bring a guest. Or you can have a walking, hiking routine that allows for another person to join you. You know, like just create your routines so that people can drop in and out of them. And one thing that I've also enjoyed doing with my girlfriends is grocery shopping together. I don't know why, like going to Costco, doing our hauls, getting samples, like that's like a two hour activity. And I love it. I love it. Make your friendships convenient. Okay. You don't have to like put on this whole thing every time you see your friends, like make them convenient. Like literally book your beauty appointments with your girlfriends, like together or just run errands together. It doesn't have to be anything big. Like I feel like there's so much pressure to like do big things with your friends and like, no, it's not about that. Okay. If you are to spend the rest of your life with these people, like they need to be part of your everyday life. And not to say that you would see them every day, but like the lifestyle has to be like similar to yours. And that's one thing that like, I feel like people have a lot of struggle with is when you have friends who live a different lifestyle from you. And we talked about it in a past class about how, you know, when your friends become new moms and it's just so hard to relate with them, blah, blah, blah. But like, you can be there to help them, you know? Like, I don't know why, like there's so much nuance to this, but all I'm saying is like, make your friendships convenient and make your friendships a habit. And the second solution, like I said, I feel like I've been saying this whole solution, this whole class is to be friends with people you actually like and who like you back. Okay, that's number two. And number three is if you do not have friends right now, like put yourself in places where your potential friends will hang out. And those are the same places that you hang out at anyway. So just engage in your hobbies, follow your passion, do what really brings you life, okay? And you will find people who are doing the same thing. And that's where you find your girlfriends. And the last one is be in your servant mindset, okay? Like you need to be in servant mindset. And I feel like people get so confused by what servant mindset is. Like servant mindset is literally being a servant to others. And it may have like a Christian kind of Catholic religious connotation, but it doesn't have to be, okay? It's just being of service to the people around you. And obviously you're not gonna do it for everyone because then you're gonna be taken advantage of by people who don't want the best for you. You do it once to people who you think are gonna be your friends, you do it once. You give it your all, like you throw your whole back into it. It's not love bombing, okay? Because you're gonna keep doing it for the rest of your friendship if it pans out. So you throw your whole back into it and you see if they reciprocate the same servant mindset. And if they don't, that's totally fine. You don't have to be friends with them. They're not a bad person and they're just not aligned with you. And also if they think that you're love bombing them, they're suspicious of you or this and that, like that also means that they're not your people and that's okay. They can be friends with other people. But if they return the same servant mindset to you, like chef's kiss, you guys are friends forever. That's it, okay? That's literally how it starts, okay? So servant mindset is not as complicated as people make it to be. It's not this insidious thing like, oh, it's so religious overtone, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, it's literally just a way of life. I think that wraps up our female friendship crisis class. In conclusion, we are in a female friendship crisis and there's so many reasons as to why but at the end of the day it is so worth it overcoming these reasons these factors because female friendships are just amazing like they make you see the best version of yourself and then you become the best version of yourself around these girls like chef's kiss okay that's all i have for you today i just want to let you know that you have so much inherent worth and value in a world that is hell-bent on devaluing you now get that bag bestie also bestie wake up 